Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Kemp. I'm a radiologist, and I'm going to be quick. Um, I think I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes, so hopefully it will answer all your questions about radiation, radiation safety, and the thyroid gland. Um, first off, uh, just a little blurb about what a radiologist is. Sometimes I don't think my parents even know what I do. Um, a radiologist is a medical doctor, and we interpret images images of using CAT scan, X-ray, ultrasound, MRI, mammogram, sometimes nuclear medicine studies and interventional radiology. So because so many of the images that we interpret use radiation, which would be X-ray, CAT scan, mammogram, we are experts in radiation safety, where there's other imaging studies that don't use radiation, such as MRI and ultrasound. But we're focusing on the radiation part of that today. So first of all, I think there's a lot in the news and the media these days about radiation and radiation safety, and it gets us to a point where we get kind of hyped up um, thinking, Mam mammography, dental x-rays, and CT scans, oh my. And I want you guys to have a different, um, more of a zippity doo da about <laughs> radiation. And not to belittle it. it, it is important, but I want you to trust us to keep you safe. So let's just talk really in general about radiation safety. So I think as we've talked a lot about other things in here, what is safety? Is safety zero risk? Is safety low risk? What is safety to you? It's a little different for different people in their tolerance of a safety level. It's really hard to get to zero risk in anything we do. Is there risk in taking penicillin? Is there risk in driving a car? Um, there are very few things that are zero risk. So as Dr. Zemmel mentioned, there's radiation all around us. We are surrounded with radiation from the stars and the sun, from radon in our air that we breathe, from the earth. There are low levels of radiation that all of us are exposed to. And in Colorado, we are exposed to about twice as much radiation as people who live at sea level. That doesn't deter people from moving here, and it shouldn't. Low levels of radiation are safe. So does radiation cause cancer? We know that high levels of radiation cause cancer. High levels of radiation, like patients that were exposed to the atomic bomb, um, nuclear medicine accidents like Chernobyl, and patients who might have radiation treatment to treat a cancer. Those are very high doses of radiation, which is different than the radiation that we're talking about in medical imaging. So does med imaging cause cancer? Well, the answer is probably a low level of risk. And it seems crazy to say probably. Um, in this world of high-tech medicine, we've had x-rays for a hundred years now. Why, why don't we know the answer to this? Well, the bottom line is it's hard to, or it's unethical to do research studies um, on patients using radiation. We're not going to give patients who don't need an imaging exam um, a radiation test and those who and patients who do and then see what happens it's just not how we operate so we what we learn about radiation we've learned from the atomic bomb survivors from the chernobyl accident and that's really a very different kind of radiation and a different kind of exposure um, but what we do know is the benefits to patients who are sick or injured who need an imaging test far outweigh the risk of radiation. Risk versus benefit should be considered for every imaging test. So a necessary exam is a safe exam. If you need an imaging study, it's a safe exam. If you don't need it and it's not going to change your management, then you don't want to take that low, low risk. And in radiology, we are taught the ALARA principle, which is as low as reasonably achievable, meaning we want to use the lowest doses possible to get the image that we need to answer the question at hand. If you use such low radiation that you can't see what you're looking for in a CAT scan or a mammogram, then you might as well not have had the test. So it's a fine balance um, between safety and benefit. So the thyroid and radiation. Some organs are more sensitive to radiation than others, such as the skin, the GI tract, the gut, are very sensitive to radiation. The thyroid is kind of in the middle of, of how sensitive it is. But we do know that the highest sensitivity is in kids. 
the highest sensitivity to radiation of the thyroid, but radiation of, a, of any part of your body is that children are much more sensitive than um, adults or older people. So when we talk about risk, we're really talking about cancer. Um, increased risk of cancer in the thyroid with radiation exposure. So again, we go back to the atomic bomb. Um, looking at 93,000 survivors over a 50-year period of time, and there is evidence that if they were exposed when they were a child or an adolescent, there is an increased risk of thyroid cancer. But we've found from the atomic bomb survivors that there's little or no evidence of an increase in thyroid cancer to those people that were exposed when they were adults. So how to protect the thyroid during imaging? Again, only do an exam if it's necessary. Don't include the thyroid in the field of view unless necessary. For example, if you're having a CAT scan, um, which is usually from about here to here, your thyroid doesn't need to be in the field of view. We're not looking at that. If you're having a sinus CT, your thyroid doesn't need to be in the field of view. But if you're having a CT scan of your cervical spine, or an x-ray of your neck, the thyroid is in the field of view. Um, so we can use a thyroid shield if possible. A thyroid shield is something that you put over your thyroid gland that protects it from the x-rays or the radiation. Um, you probably had them maybe at the dentist. Um, but what you don't want is a thyroid shield that's making the images um, less diagnostic. So if the thyroid shield is in the way of the x-rays and then you can't see what you're looking for in the cervical spine or the lymph nodes in the neck, then that's really not serving any purpose. So what about mammography? Do you need a thyroid shield with mammography? The evidence is you don't. Um, the radiation that your thyroid gland receives during a mammogram is equal to about 30 minutes of walking around in background radiation. So really it's very minor. So not only do you not need the thyroid shield with a mammogram, it's recommended <laughs> that you don't have it because the, having the shield could actually get in the way of the proper positioning of the mammogram and that defeats the whole purpose of the mammogram. So thyroid shield is not recommended during a mammogram. How about with a CAT scan? So again, um, use a thyroid shield when possible. When possible would be if the thyroid is not in the field of view. So with a CAT scan of the chest or the sinuses. If you're getting um, imaging of your foot, it's so far away from your thyroid gland that it's not a, an area of concern. And of course, reduce the dose as much as possible, so the ALARA principle. And that's up to us to do. It's not up to you to reduce the dose. Um, dental x-ray. So because we know from atomic bomb survivors that children are the most sensitive, thyroid shield is recommended for all children getting a dental x-ray, not necessarily for adults, but if, if it's not going to get in the way of the positioning for the imaging of your um, teeth, then why not have a thyroid shield? It, it shouldn't hurt, so why not? So I would just remind you, again, um, three questions before any imaging test. Why do I need this exam? Ask yourself that question. If you can't ask that question, ask your doctor. How will having this exam improve my health care? Will it change my management? We don't image patients out of curiosity. We image people because we're trying to answer a question. And are there alternatives that do not use radiation, which are equally as good? There's some scenarios where you could have an ultrasound or an MRI that do not use radiation. And ask your doctor, ask to talk to the radiologist if you have a question. But the as equally as good is a very key um, phrase because a lot of times we'll have patients come in and say, I don't want a CAT scan, I want an ultrasound. But if the ultrasound is not gonna answer the question at hand, then the CT is the test of choice. So that's all I have. Thank you.